Yo, what's good? It's your boy Boss Rhyme. Shout out to the pharmacist, Cultivators Cup. Hey, y'all need to do me the biggest favor, please. Everybody's like weed at the same time. I've never seen that. I've never seen that before. I'm gonna give y'all a second. If you gotta roll up, cool. Roll the fuck up. I'm gonna see every split. Yo, please, like, in unison. Like, this shit gonna look like new addition on this motherfucker. Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Ronnie. Smoking weed together. I need to see it. I need to see it. When well, y'all ready, just start making noise, please, so I can get on the show. Can you turn the lights on? I need to see this shit. Yeah. Okay. On the count of three, y'all like your L's. Start lighting up. Greatly appreciate you all. This is a collective effort. Can I smoke with you? What the fuck do I get you for, bro? Thank you. Good. Now let's get to some good weed music. Cultivators Cup started in Rhode Island. We had had another event called Cannabis All Stars that was done for maybe like seven years prior for the, the legacy traditional market. We came up with an idea to have curated sample packs called Judges Kits from all the best growers in the state. And um, we'd compile it into one kit and we'd get a dispensary to be our retail partner and then they would be able to you know, sell the kits to the public and we'd be able to get you know, a, a broad range of opinions on the products that are readily available in Massachusetts. And then, um, you know, people's choice, we'd let them decide who won. So we get no say in who wins other than if we were to buy a kit like anybody else, you know, and it's truly people's choice. And it's, it's been a really cool platform to be able to like, you know, really get the word out. Because a lot of people in Mass are strained with how they're able to market and how they can actually get in touch with people. People from a traditional market are used to being able to like smoke with the weed man or like, you know, meet them in a sense that's not just so cut and dry like some of the dispensary settings are. And this is kind of like a way to get them involved in, you know, a more organic sense and like meet their customers and be able to like, you know, let their hair down and meet them in a 21 plus setting that's regulated and actually celebrating the plant not just here you got to buy this now you got to go off property you know mass doesn't really set the tone on you know social consumption so we're trying to just like pave the way with that we started in Rhode Island moved it to Massachusetts and you know it's really just about that shedding a light to people doing it right So Benny and Conway, amazing to work with. She see my watch, but I don't got a second. This wrist got his extras. This in the pot doing calisthenics. They talk, 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 but they don't want no issues. All they talk is gunplay, but they don't own no pistols. Those guys, nice. I don't even know. I never even really officially signed nothing. Did not like went and sent them money. That was more working like the old school way. Like here, send them the money. Did it through a friend, you know that, you know. Bunch of people eat off, it was great, and then like, you know, they everybody that's eating off makes sure it's gonna happen, you know, like Busta I was dealing with his manager and then just his booking agency, like there was nobody making nothing, they don't you know, it was just hopefully they like the deal, you know. Y'all good outside? What's up with y'all, man? Y'all having a good time out this motherfucker? I ain't gonna lie, I love coming out this bitch to perform with y'all. Y'all some of the realest fans I got, I ain't gonna hold you. The nigga was first coming up in this shit, doing this shit, man. That was this is one of the first stops I came through, man. And I ain't gonna lie, man. Y'all done held the nigga down from the day one, nigga. I love y'all for that. I don't usually get outside much, man. And I ain't gonna lie, I've been thinking a lot lately too. Nigga going through a lot of shit. This might be really one of my last shows right here, so I really wanna put on for y'all motherfuckers, man. I'm about to go crazy tonight, yeah. Can I go crazy tonight? Yeah. 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 Yeah
know I'm a legend. Bitch, you know I'm a legend. All of my poor people pull the possession. They shot at a miss, man. The Lord was a blessing. They must have been praying like Lord is my shepherd. Who ain't the same since my bro got arrested? I thank the Lord that he only got seven. Keep thinking I'm pussy, I'm bro with this effort. Play if you want me to hold it, you're coming. Put them numbers like Kobe 07. I feel like I'm Mike and my Jordan 11. Six stones in the bezel, the road is present. These little niggas still trying to get on my level. If they were smoking, you know it's whatever. They rap on my brother, you know you were selling. Who's the what's going on? Shit, <laughs> and then I see the next day that they posted content from the stage and shit. So that was epic, you know. Those guys came through, were super easy to work with, showed up, stayed around, hung out, and then I think they were hanging out. I saw a lot of photos at the back that I didn't even know they were still like back there, like Conway with his shirt off, just fuck it. I don't know, I definitely set it. We tried to set a bar, you know. I tried to not make it easily repeatable, you know. So even now for me, I'm like, I pigeonhole myself because the next one's not going to be busted in both thugs. I don't know who it's going to be, you know. So it's like, it's a, it's a hard build to top. It's a hard build to top. If you like hip hop, you know, for me, Bone Thugs is like, I watched them like when I was so young, like Crossroads, and I was probably, I don't even know, maybe 10 to 12. That was a crazy difference, definitely working with them. Bone, Bone, I don't even know how Bone Thugs ended up being there, to be honest. They hit me up, we had, uh, they said I had put in a deposit in like March. I was like, are you sure? You know, they're like, yep, book everything, they come out. Yeah. Ended up all being good, but it was a fucking great addition that literally came four days before the guy hit me up he's like hey who do i hit for advance on the show like all right fuck this is gonna be epic but in the venue you know they were very like Listen, we've never had any issues here. They've never rented that venue to anybody. And like to, to end up like renting it to me two months beforehand when I'm like almost out of options at this point was like a blessing in the sky. Like it was just like, thank God I found these people. Then they ended up being hands down like the greatest people to work with. So like they, they helped me along the way do everything that needed to get done, went with me to get permits and stuff. For a, for a venue, they were they were really cool, like and welcoming and shit, you know. And then also, you know, had a lot of contacts with the staging companies and stuff like that. So it was pretty dope. It's just doing what I'm doing. Every once in a while, you know, people will reach out with you know crazy stories and thank yous and like you know things that are like wicked heartfelt and let you know that you did make an impact on somebody's life or you know they had a great time so to me that is just the coolest thing like I'm not you know my whole summer went into trying to make like a dope weekend for people you know so you don't know how far your ripples make it you know so hopefully you know hopefully it's reverberating all of it was uh, fun and exciting, you know, both um, Redman I've worked with in the past, so 
never got to have him and Method Man as a duo, so it was really cool. You know, to organically bring them back, you know, was was epic. Yo, everybody been smoking in here, man. You might have to slow it down for the hobby. Slow it down. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the part of the show that we call crowd participation. Some of you know it, some of you don't. For the people that know it, be patient. I have to explain it to the people that don't. I said, I want you to make as much noise as you can for as long as you can. Make some noise in this joint, man! We had had them booked originally, and then because of COVID and everything else, and things getting canceled, like they they weren't originally able to do the new date that we had. So it was like, shit, what do we do? Now, it is time for my brothers from the West Coast. We all flew in here because we love you so much. Back home to New England, where I'm from. LA. Los Angeles is in the house for real, you guys. These are my brothers, and their name is Cypress Hill! We reached out to uh, Cypress Hill through uh, my buddy Bobby, Bobby D Presents. He does like the management or like, you know, booking or whatever of these guys. He, gave us some options and he had Cypress Hill open. I was like, you know, that's fucking epic. budget side so but went back to to my partners and was like you know this is you know it's a good look it's a you know legendary you know band that's 100 percent still relevant today <clears throat> you know have a good draw we did it and then i knew exactly when that was going to happen that like i was like watch then all of a sudden met the man right man are going to hit us up and be like oh hey actually it works out so we have that date and they did and then it was like all right so what do we do do we just you know push them to the next day and you know hold off on it because we'd already sent a deposit and then they were, you know we decided you know fuck it let's add them to it and let's just do both what's up y'all this is method man right here to cal yes the cal official will be coming to new england by via by my guy here the pharmacist Y'all probably see this t-shirts floating around and shit. They pretty cool too, you know what I mean? Got the little skunk on there and shit with the medical uniform, you know. Y'all know how we do. Yes, sir. Medicinal purposes only. Talk about it. Calipricia. You know, so that was crazy. Did it. And, you know, that was just epic. It's only right that me and my brother take the beautiful people of Boston, Massachusetts. Did I say that right? Hey, <laughs> we in Somerset, though. Hey! Somerset, Massachusetts, Boston, it's all the same shit. They smoke weed out. So when you come check out my boy, come check out the pharmacist out here in Boston. Red MF, we done kill shit. Put the pharmacist and the whole crew out here at their club, at the crib. We know the fam, and it still don't stop. Pharmacist, Red Man in the building. Holla! Yo, what's up, everybody? I'm DJ Premier. Shout to the pharmacist for throwing this jam. <laughs> Those guys are 100% great professionals to work with, you know. And, you know, that's how, you know, as I'm sure you know too. It's how you build relationships with these guys. I don't give a shit who you are, but if you're a good person, you know, I'll vibe with you. So it's it's how it is with that. All those people are good good people, you know. They don't put you, put themselves on a pedestal around other people, which is really cool. My guy here, the pharmacist. <laughs> That 
was uh, Battlegrounds USA, and those guys were there just like doing crazy shit. And then they started talking to us because you know we're just there with the bus, smoking weed, and just you know start talking. And then it was right before last year we had an event. We were planning on bringing them to to the place that Solar when we were doing it there. Well, wasn't gonna happen insurance wise. People just weren't they weren't allowing the BMX happen. Very limited space. It was just last minute. And I really wanted to always do something with these guys and like start talking. So they reached back out when I they started when we started promoting this year. And he's like, hey, we'd love to you know get involved with any any way we can. You know, so I was like, perfect. Reached out to the venue. Was like, is this cool? You know, it insured them on it and everything. You know, I think that was probably one of the coolest things that. And I think people might not even have noticed like where it was, like down in the cut. Some people like walked in, grabbed, grabbed their spot, and like that was it, weren't moving. Just here waiting for Bus to come out of the bus. That way we can escort him to the show and get it lit, baby. All right, here we go for the pharmacist, baby. All right, for the pharmacist, I'm gonna just be around right now. <laughs> the Golden Babies got what? You some motherfuckers. Got my pose, what's the name of that motherfucker that? What's the nigga name? Captain Morgan. Captain Morgan, my Captain Morgan pose. <laughs> Massachusetts, you ready? Sound like a few of y'all live in the spawn. Y'all smoke too much weed today, huh? <laughs> yeah. Massachusetts, are you ready? You can't spray the shit when I need the response, so it's distracted. I appreciate the props and shit. I need to hear the people one more time on the act show list without the distraction. Massachusetts, are you motherfucking ready? And then Busta is a legend, amazing, but one person at that level, you know, like. Cypress Hill is a group. They all work together at that, but when you get one guy who's like, you gotta deal with that level of shit, it's crazy. I've never, never dealt with that. It was, it was dope. If you're feeling good, and you're ready to party, somebody say hell yeah! Hell yeah! All right, let's go. Here we came to party, yo! Yes, we came to party, yo! Yes, we came to party! But they announced that tour and that was like, oh my God. They I got an email one day and it said, seven days before the show, it says you, get, you, you should find a new headliner. I'm like, like you talk about like I'm gonna go to Walmart and be like, all right, let me let me get an LL Cool J and uh, somebody else. Like I'm like, I'm like, dude, I don't have a lineup of people. I have, I have Busta Rhymes. That's who we booked. Like this whole thing's built around that. There's like billboards. Like biggest fear coming to life right here. It's like we got this tour. People are now talking shit. Oh, he's not coming. Look at this. Like making it look bad. Like fuck. Luckily reached out, they made that drop, which was epic. They don't do that. Hey, yo, what's good? It's your boy, Boss Rhyme. Shout out to the pharmacist of nature's heritage. I will be blowing it down crazy at the Cultivator's Cup, Worcester, Massachusetts, September 3rd. Y'all better pull up this Saturday. Y'all know what it is. Salute. Came through, didn't miss the date. This year was great. It's the Palladium in Worcester. Um, I worked there over 20 years ago. Buster Rhymes was there before. It was a great time. It felt like the walls were caving in and stuff. So it was pretty good they put it outside this last time. And in over 20 years, he hadn't lost a step. This guy, great energy, it was hilarious. It was a very enter He's an entertainer, not just a musician, where it's like, you don't really get it in the when you listen to his music as opposed to seeing him live. It's a fucking fire. Especially being able to take bong riffs while you're doing it. But 
like two days, I was like, holy shit. Like, I didn't tell a soul. I was just like, I was like, oh man, what do I do? I was like, who do you, and then, you know, we had obviously a couple of lineups that were, were possible. It was like Nelly and like somebody else that was possible to get back. But I was like, to me, it didn't matter. We could have got fucking Justin Bieber. It, the fact that I said Busta Rhymes was coming, it wasn't at that point, was like, oh my God. <laughs> Everybody was great to work with. Bone Thugs was great. Everybody was super good, like, on the actual working with. But the fact that, like, they at one point told me to, like, find another act, like, it was no big deal, was the worst business that was about to ever happen in my life. Oh shit, son! <laughs> Alright, let's go, sir. And like, working with Norris is good friend. <laughs> he was the only person to be a camera. Just you and I, talking it down. Everybody said Buster's so professional, never misses a show. Never misses a show. He has a great, great reputation. And then now I'm the one who's like, about to be the one that, one, now I look like an idiot, and then two, this is about to be like the first show. I'm like, no. So, thank God it happened, honestly. Everyone in the last two guests might say, hell yeah. So don't waste time. The police presence was a lot better at the second cup than the first one. The first one, it felt like the Gestapo was lining up along the fringes of the property, ready to pounce, whereas like the Worcester cops are laughing at him. Another year, another beautiful success for the pharmacists, putting everything together. Thank you, brother, for all the blessings that you have given everybody and the opportunity and awareness of everything. You know what I mean? Love is love, my brother. One. We are here. We are here. Fifi. You already know. <laughs> Naughty and Nori, God damn it. Uh, yeah, That's in and in, motherfucker. In and in. <laughs> Nature's Heritage, yo, because they were, they were the sponsor this year. Uh, we had Solar last year as a sponsor. Awesome people work great. This year we worked with Nature's Heritage, another great, great company. They, they really set a huge bar though. Like they, they really brought their activation. So shout out, shout out Nature's Heritage. Me coming the fuck back here with meth to get some more of this shit. So to the pharmacists. Yeah. Yeah. Thank y'all for having me out here, and I will smoke this. You can check us out. Uh, Instagram, the pharmacist 420. We got the pharmacist.com. Shout out Mr. DL. I should spell it because I probably get so many missed emails from people who email like the PH guy. So it's the pharmacist, T H E F A R M A C I S T 420. Mr. DL. Yeah.